DaVinci Resolve has some of the best tracking and masking tools of any video editing software. But sometimes, shapes can get complex enough to warrant splitting them into individual nodes for the sole purpose of making a great mask. Like blurring the face of this woman on the bench with a power window, and then separately magic masking the dude that walks right in front of her on its own node. In just a few minutes today, I'd like to come alongside and teach you the color page tracker essentials and how you can combine multiple masks using the key mix node on the color page to combine a power window and a magic mask for any occlusions that you might need to deal with. For our cutting club members that want to follow along, the footage is up at creativevideotips.com. You know what to do. And a huge thanks to you for supporting and growing this channel so we can all learn together. This shot right here is a great example of real world situations where you might need to blur someone. Let's say we need to blur this woman's face, but we don't want to blur the dude that walks in front of her. So I'm going to break this down into four easy steps and use as many keyboard shortcuts as possible so you can learn to work as fast as possible. So after our original primary grade, let's say we do our original primary grades in node one, I'm going to add a new serial, option S, and step one is going to be to put a power window on her and get the tracking working. So I'll click the power window button over here. And once the power window is on screen, I'm going to center it up by just clicking on dragging on that center anchor point, placing it on her nose, and I'll close it up so that we don't have any feathering around the outside. Tracking works best when there's no feathering. And you can just size this up by just dragging the corners, placing it on her, and conveniently, DaVinci Resolve has an amazing cloud tracker that's right next to the power windows. By clicking on that, we can start tracking. Now, before you do anything, I want to point out something. We're in the cloud tracker, which is amazing. It automatically selects points, but it's going to grab too much tracking data for us. It's going to grab zoom, rotate, 3D. This shot we've seen just goes left, right, up, and down, so I don't need these, so I'm going to uncheck those first. And to start tracking, you could quickly just click this button to track forward or backwards, or keyboard shortcuts, going to be Command T to track forward from this point forward. And you can see it's almost instantaneously. It is blazing fast. So the idea here is I need this window to go completely off screen, and it's, it's actually not doing that. It gets close, but then it runs out of tracking data to get it to move off screen. And a simple way to fix this back end right here at the very end of the shot to get the tracking data to move that off screen is just to overwrite it with something else that we can track in the frame while still in clip mode, right? So this bench is kind of on the same plane as her, so I can assume that motion's about the same. So what I can do is just click and drag to move this down here temporarily to this part of the bench, hit Command T, and I've been able to continue that motion path um, without having to manually do anything. I was able to let the computer do all that tracking information for us. And I want to show you basically what's it happened. It, if you click the three dot menu, there's a section in here called show track. And with show track selected, you can see it's just basically created this displacement path. And while in clip mode, this is the affect everything mode, you can just pick up and drag that path or that window to anywhere else on screen so we can see we've successfully moved that circle power window off frame. Now we need to get to the other side of things, which is arguably more difficult, but it's actually not, and you'll see why. So to start tracking the other direction towards the beginning of the shot, we have a track reverse button or option T on a Mac is gonna track the other direction. And it goes great for a while until obviously the dude covers up too much and we can't get good tracking data. So at this point, we're gonna do something different. Instead of overwriting tracking data, we're gonna delete bad tracking data. So I'm gonna go to the last frame that looks like it was solid and stuck on her face, which is maybe right around there. And then to delete the bad tracking data, all you need to do is down here in the tracking palette window, I'm gonna box select the bad tracking data. So you get this marquee box, then go to the three dot options menu and say clear selected track data. And boom, that's gone. So we've got more data. We've got more, we've got that window going a little bit further, but how do we go on from here? How do we get to the other side? That's where the manual mode, which is set under the frame section of the tracker window, um, the tracker palette is taken care of. So go to frame mode. And under here, the first thing we need to do is lock in a keyframe. So this diamond right here is gonna lock in a keyframe for that point. And then we move until we can see her again. And Resolve is gonna automatically interpolate the two differences for us. So I'm gonna drag this window while in frame mode, and you'll notice it's just gone straight through the dude. And don't worry, we're gonna deal with the occlusion in step two, 
but we want to continue this so that it goes completely off screen from this point forward. So I'm going to hit Option T to let it automatically track backwards a little bit. We didn't get all the way there, but again, we're going to find the last good moment, which is maybe right around there or so. From this point on, I'm going to hit a, a keyframe again, because at this point, I want to lock things in. I'm going to box select the bad track data that didn't get us off screen. Three dot options menu, clear selected track data. And from here forward, you could just manually move it if you wanted to. So if I just went to a frame that I felt like, okay, it's off screen, really good right there. We're set right there. And the other thing to pay attention to is this last keyframe that was set down there was from earlier. So just keep that off frame as well. And you can see we've manually gotten it off screen in a different way just by manually doing it on that side. So if I hit Z to zoom to fit, we can see we're going through the dude and we're going completely off screen. So step two is going to be all about getting a magic mask we can combine with the, uh, the circle polygon that we did. So let's get this started on a new node. I'm going to come over here, hit Option S. That just gives us a new serial node to work on. And then I'm going to work on this in parallel, not in serial here. So I'll hit E to extract the node, and we'll hook this up to the original source. This is one of the coolest things about nodes. You can keep reusing the same source in lots of different ways. So on this, uh, this node right here, we're going to use our magic mask, which is the AI-based rotoscoping tool that's sort of built into DaVinci Resolve. And let's say on this frame right here, I'm going to come over here to our magic mask palette. And we just need to grab our little eyedropper, make a selection by just kind of drawing over different contrast areas. And if you don't see anything, it's because we need to actually turn on this, this little highlight overlay mode. And then it'll give us a red overlay of what we've actually selected. And if you want to not have these really hard edges, just click better for quality. It'll soften those up, make it look a little bit more organic, maybe a little more accurate. And then we got to track it. There's a track forward and backwards button. There's not a huge tutorial on Magic Mask. It's more just um, how can we combine these afterwards. So looks like it did a pretty great job right off the bat. Um, if you want to just see... The most important part is when he crosses her to make sure that his arm is separate there. And then the other side looks like I did a pretty decent job. If you want to see a different view of this, you can always come up here to highlight mode. Shortcut's going to be Shift H. And then go to the black and white mode. Turn off this overlay. You can see it's generating this black and white mat. So it's basically a quick, cheap roto. It's not super precise, but we don't need it to be super precise to blur the woman's face. So from this point on, we're going to go to Key Mix next. Step three is all about the Key Mixer. So if you're in highlight mode, in the black and white mode, that was Shift H to get to highlight mode, and then click this button right here to get the black and white highlight mode, we want to combine this black and white information with this black and white information to get a great looking mask that only appears on her face and not on the dude walking in front. How do we do that? We add a Key Mixer node. Now the first time I tried to add a Key Mixer node, I would right click on a node and say Add Node, and there's no key mixer over here. The reason why is you need to click in the empty space to add a key mixer. So right click in the empty space, add a node. We got a new node here called a key mixer, which is essentially like a layer node. It combines things, but it only combines transparency information. So these blue masks, anything blue in Resolve coming out or in is just about the black and white transparency information. So let's hook this thing up. I'm going to disconnect this here from the output right now so I can just show you one by one what we're doing. I'm going to combine the circle mask that was on the woman from the blue mask output into the key mixer. And I'll also grab this one right here, which is going from the magic mask into there. And if we click there, we can see it's combined both. So it's added both of those together. Now, there's a new palette down here I want to bring to your attention. It's the called the key palette. And what this allows us to do is change that behavior so that they're not just adding together that they actually can interact in a different way. So input to link down here is referring to the magic mask one. And I want to invert this, which is what this button will do here. So that'll invert. And then the, I also want it to mask. So I hit invert and I hit mask. And now what's essentially done is it's cut out when that person was walking in front. So it's really, really cool way of isolating uh, different masks and having them work together. So how does this work on actual image data? We've just done black and white masking information here. So first thing I'll do, I'll just, let's get out of the highlight mode, which is right up here. Uh, you could click that button or hit Shift H will get us out of highlight mode. 
I'm going to add a new serial node over here to do our blurring on by just right clicking, say add node, and just a corrector node is, is fine. And I'll take the original data for one side of it, and I actually want to take the mask that we created from the key mixer, plug that into here, and then the output can go back out to the timeline. So essentially, we haven't really seen what this has done yet, and I want to show you in a real obvious way before we go on to doing the blur, and that's just to put a crazy offset color to it. And you can see, as the guy walks in front, it is getting subtracted from the rest of that mask, and it sticks right over the top of, you see what right here? Goes right over there. So that way we're not actually affecting him at all or any of those pixels that are in front. Now a realistic use case of this is probably not to make your face pink, but I want to show you how do we adjust this after the fact. You can come back here to this, this face node. In fact, you might right click to say node label and call this face so it's really obvious. Um, would be to actually modify this mask, soften it up a little bit. Go to your, your power window section over here. Make sure that your tracker is not set to frame because we want to globally change this setting here. So I'll go back to clip. And when it's set to clip, I can go back to this mask here and I can soften this. I can increase the size of it. I could even just move it over a little bit if I needed to. And it'll adjust across all those frames. And it sticks to her really, really nicely. And obviously, if we didn't want to make this make her have a purple face, the whole point was to blur it. I'm going to reset the offset on this node, which is actually doing the correction. And we'll go to the blur palette. That's this guy right here. Crank the blur up. And we maybe even, this is the nice thing about nodes. We can keep juggling back and forth between all these. Maybe I want to add a little bit more softness to it. Maybe scale it up a little bit more. Come over here. And uh, I'll give you one more keyboard shortcut. While you're in this tab here, it can be a little distracting to see all of those on-screen controls. If you hit Shift tilde, it's a quick way to sort of uh, hide those overlays, which when you're on a node with a power window, it wants to do that. So that Shift tilde will power those on and off. If you want to take this a little bit further and do a different sort of blur instead of the one that's in the blur palette, I could come back over here to this node that's actually doing the blur. Let's actually rename this one as well. And on this one here, instead of doing that sort of blur, we actually also have what's called a mosaic blur, which is that sort of blocky looking blur. So that could be added to this node instead. I'll close my effects up. And so that's a different way to blur her face. So there's your setup. This could just be used for primary grades. We'll just change this to call primary. And then these are mask grades. So that's our face. And then this is our occlusion. It's all mixed together with the key mix node. The key here is set to invert the second mask input and mask it. Hey, I'm Chadwick. I'm a DaVinci Resolve master trainer and finishing artist here based in New York. I'm so thankful that you spent your time hanging out with me today. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.